So Arcadian is the most recent movie starring Nicolas Cage. It's kind of set in the near future, dystopian future. And the beginning of the movie starts out where he's fleeing the city because mankind's obviously been overrun by something. And after he makes it out of the city, he kind of runs all the way to this farmhouse. He finds these two kids that are left abandoned and he kind of takes them under his wing and he's going to be a father to them. And from this point, we're going to fast forward about 15 years or so into the present day where you have Nick Cage raising these two sons and they're kind of living amongst themselves into the woods because mankind is kind of burnt out at this point. So from here, you just kind of have dudes being dudes, living in the woods, you living on a farm, you know, kind of make ends meet because they're the only ones around. Before we, the viewers, find out anything about what's going on, why things happened, where everybody is, you kind of have these two sons of his that kind of contrast each other. You have this one really smart, nerdy kid. He's kind of like a genius, as the dad says. The other kid's kind of like a jock. And his whole thing is he's kind of just has this thing for the neighboring farm girl. And that's kind of important because you're going to spend a lot of the movie just getting to know the characters in this movie. It's, I don't know how it was marketed really. I didn't really follow the trailer, the hype or anything around this movie, but it really is kind of like a coming of age, slow burn drama about family more than it is about the monsters. So starting off with the most obvious positive in the way they could market this movie, it stars Nick Cage. And me personally, I'm happy to see him back on the big screen actually somewhere in a movie theater. I know he keeps doing these like indie movies like Pig, Willy's Wonderland, stuff like that where he finds himself on streaming services, but I'm actually glad he made it to the theaters again. Because I would imagine the conversation of getting Nicolas Cage went a little something like this. Nick A, how you doing, man? Yeah, we'd love to have you on, but you only got 20 minutes? You gotta catch a flight? Yeah, don't worry, man, head over, head over. We'll fit your scenes in right now. Because the way this movie starts off, you'd be led to believe that, like, Nicolas Cage is going to carry the entire movie, but due to circumstances within the movie, he kind of just goes on my for about an hour or so. So in actuality, what you end up following is his two kids, actually, the Brainiac and kind of the Jockey Kid. And it's kind of weird because it's trying to balance like five temples at once. You have this like monster movie in the background. You have this nerdy kid who's trying to experiment with things, learn about the creatures. You kind of have this like love story where the jock's going over to this neighboring farm and he's just trying to flirt with one of the neighboring girls. And another positive of this movie, in my opinion, is that the acting's actually good from both the kids. And whenever you have kids in movies, you know, it's kind of sketch. It can really be hit or miss. But I thought both the kids actually did a good job acting. I mean, it can't help the jock kid because he was written to be an idiot. But like, you know, I thought they both did a good job with what they were given. And they kind of carry the movie because, as I said, more than a monster movie, the majority of this movie is kind of like a coming of age movie during the apocalypse. And I don't know if it's going to be just me, but I thought the kid who goes over to the neighboring farm and he's helping out with the farmer's daughter. I thought that kid was kind of just annoying as shit. And maybe I missed the backstory of this or something, but like, I feel like he had like this haircut where somebody came up behind him with a pair of clippers and just buzzed parts of his heads out. So he had these like missing parts of his hair. And all I was thinking when I was watching him is that somebody tampered with his hair. But when you get back to the story about what's happening with mankind, you know, where did everybody go? What's going on with the creatures? I would explain this movie as being about 90% it comes at night and about 10% dog soldiers. So do what you will with that information. Because even after the movie, you really don't find out like a whole lot about what's going on. Like they really don't give you anything because this movie has like one of the laziest exposition dumps I've ever recalled in the movie. Up until about the halfway point in the movie, you still have no answers. You're kind of like confused what's going on in the world. You're just following the characters. You have the jockey kid talking to the farmer's daughter. They're kind of flirting. They play this game called, let's describe what happened to the world in 10 seconds. Not subtle. And during this little game they've created, the two of them take turns doing their little 10 second segments, kind of just giving you a complete overview in a couple sentences of what happened to the world because you don't see it. They just tell you what happened. I mean, I don't know. It's just a minor detail to me, but I mean, I've seen exposition dumps that are lazy where they got to catch you up and stuff, but that was one of the most obvious cliche ones I've seen in a long time. And after you get your little exposition dump, you start figuring what's going on. You figure they're going to start showing you and stuff where this movie clearly suffers the most is obviously it's very, very low budget. And that's not to say I hate low budget movies. I like a lot of low budget movies. I didn't even hate this movie, but this movie suffers a lot because it wants to have this unique creature design, but the budget is obviously so low, it just needs to become a CGI shit show at a certain point. And if there's one recommendation I can give you going into this movie, it's pop a Dramamine and buy some night vision goggles because this movie is shaky as shit. And it is pitch black. You cannot see half of this movie's design. And that's not a knock on the general cinematography. When you're in like the day, when they're doing like the farm work and stuff, I think the movie looks good. But the problem is obviously they're trying to hide a low budget. You've all seen a movie where whenever the monster comes, the screen just starts kind of going like this. and You can't see anything. That's one of these movies. And again, I don't know if it's just me, but everything in this movie for some reason was kind of making me nauseous the way it was filmed. I mean, just the way I'm talking to you, like when you're seeing the characters talk, every scene like this has a shaky cam. It's like somebody was holding the camera like this the whole time and they had no tripods. When you do get to some of the reveals about the monsters, how they're designed, how they look, some of it's actually pretty cool, like the creature design, what they're making the creatures do. But I was struggling to see what was going on because it's such a CGI show and it's so dark to hide it. 
you kind of have trouble making out what's even going on in any of the scenes with them. So much so, in fact, I couldn't even tell you right now definitively like what it looked like. If you gave me a piece of paper and said, draw the monster, I have an idea in my head of like the concept of what they were trying to do. But when I'm thinking about it, like there were so many like hodgepodges of like different angles and what it looked like. I have no idea what this monster was supposed to look like. The most memorable design choice of what they have the monsters doing is the monsters will like flap their jaws and teeth really quick. Like one of those fake pairs of teeth that you wind up that just go. Tuck, 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 tuck. And at first I thought it was kind of a cool dynamic. I'd never seen a monster do that, but the longer it went on, the more I just started laughing. And at a certain point I started laughing out loud in the theater. So yeah, I wasn't like a super huge fan of the monster design. It wasn't the worst I've ever seen. I'll give them credit for uniqueness, but definitely could have been better. And something else this movie really likes to do, especially towards the end, is it's very, very dark. You have a hard time seeing a lot of the scenes. They flashbang you about three to five times in the past 10 minutes. Oh, what the? Got me feeling like that one scene from Bird Box where the guy's holding the old lady's eyes open. And something else I thought was really weird about this movie is there's only one piece of music for the score and they keep playing it on loop for every scene. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with the music. I actually thought the music fit during like the farm scenes, but when they use it after the action scenes, it was like, didn't really blend because all the music in this movie sounds like the office theme music but like remix so it's kind of like you're watching the office but like monsters are killing people but the more i'm thinking about it it kind of sounds like i'm shitting on this movie more than i intended to i didn't actually mind this movie it was fine i've seen plenty worse especially monster movies the fact that it went for a unique monster design i'm always a fan of creature movies and you know i'll give them the benefit of the doubt so with that if i had to give arcadian a rating i would have to say you could do worse and you probably have by no means the best movie i've ever seen it's definitely not the worst it was Pretty slow in some points. I probably wouldn't watch it again, but it's only 90 minutes. I probably think it would have worked better as just like a coming of age drama and like the apocalypse more than trying to inject the monsters into it. But I mean, it does make it unique, so whatever. But yeah, have you guys seen this movie yet? Or do you plan on seeing it? If you have, comment down below, let me know. And if you haven't seen this movie and have no plans of seeing it, comment down below what your favorite Nicolas Cage movie is. And you can't say National Treasure because come on, we all know that shit. And other than that, as always, I'm going to post a link to all my other 2024 views up here. If you haven't subbed already, what the hell are you doing? But yeah, that's all I got for this video. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.